Hi, welcome back. Now the um, purpose of this video is that I'm uh, going to continue um, with another volume in the ZX Spectrum Legends um, series that I started uh, yesterday with the uh, tribute to Jonathan Jotha Smith. Now the subject of volume two is going to be Don Priestley who gave us uh, many, many memorable games um, with his, uh, the later ones, a very, very distinct graphical style. Now, Don Priestley was born in 1940 and up until 1979 he was a teacher and he um, enrolled himself and his son into a computing uh, course at a night school. Now, his son didn't complete the course, but Don did. And he went on to start writing games, um, some of which were produced for the ZX Spect uh, sorry, ZX81. Um, I'm not going to focus on them. I'm going to uh, focus on his ZX uh, sorry, ZX Spectrum output, which the majority of stuff in the early days was handled by DK Tronics. Now, we'll be referring to Crash Magazine and other magazine reviews and also to interviews conducted at the time with himself. Now, we start in 1982 and we have, what's this one? We have 3D Tanks. What a great little game this one is. Kind of like a shooting gallery game. And this was the first, today was the first time I ever played it. It really is fun. It's a great game if you want to um, have a few sort of high score challenges with yourselves and your mates. It really is a, a, a nice game. Like I say, I, I never knew it until um, until today came around. Um, really enjoyed playing this and had quite a few blasts on it. Bearing in mind um, the segment I recall, uh, sorry, I've included in the video is only 40 seconds long or 40 odd seconds long. I actually played it for about 45 minutes. I really enjoyed it. And it was a real big seller for him. Sold 5,000 copies a month for 15 months. So, yeah, money spinner. Now, he followed that up, or, you know, the next game that I'm um, covering is Meteoroids. Now, this is not a good game. And he admits so himself in a uh, in an interview um, in 1988 with um, Philip B. Um, he describes it as, let me call the article up, if my phone will behave. He describes it as crap. And he's not wrong. Um, but, you know, everyone's allowed a, a slight blot on their copybook. You know, only proves that people are human. But it's part of his um, library. And if you want to check it out, then please do. Now, we go into 1983 uh, next. And these games, again, were handled by DKtronics. The first one of which I'm going to show you is, again, another one that I didn't know about. And, again... One that I really, really enjoyed, Dictator. It's kind of like a strategy game when you're the uh, you're the dictator of the Rimbatan Republic, and you've got to basically take um, as many uh, decisions as you possibly can to stay in power, including keeping the army on side, uh, crushing rebellions, keeping the Americans and Russians on side, or playing them off against each other. Really, really is quite an amusing little game. There's assassination attempts, you know. You can do all sorts. You can sort of bribe the uh, the secret police. You can, you know, make the army vice president. Sorry, the army chief, your vice president. Mm, yeah, right. That's not going to result in an attempted coup, is it? So, but really great game. Check this one out. I'm going to do another an in-depth review of this one because I really enjoyed it. Now, next up we have um, Jumbly, which um, was reviewed in your spectrum uh, issue three from may 1984 and it was quite well received um and it's a game along the lines of the old um, sliding puzzle things you know if you remember domok's um split personality stroke spitting spitting image game um it's very much along those lines but very much more difficult i find um but again it's still a really really um fun little game and worth checking out now um he describes Jumbly as, let me get to it, as uh, good, but nobody bought it. <laughs> it's a bit harsh. But anyway, Jumbly um, it plays out, and we move on to the next one from 1983, which is going to be um, Maziax, which is a recreation of Mazogs, his ZX81 game. Now, this is a really, really great little game. Um, you know, you've got to think about it. You have swords and stuff that you can fight the Maziacs with, but they're only, you only get to use them once. So you've got to plan your strategy around it. Now, I'm fairly certain this is amongst one of the first games I played on my mate's um, ZX Spectrum. Not the first. I think that honour has to go to um, Scuba Dive. But Maziacs is still um, a really, really nice little game. Um, Crash gave it 82% in their, uh, in their February 1984 issue. And he describes it as okay. 
in his Philip B interview. Now, uh, well, I can't remember what the next game is. Oh, yeah, I can. Yep. The next game coming up is um, Spawn of Evil. Now, I'm sorry, I can't work out what to do on this game um, at all. It looks nice, and there's some really nice sort of uh, physics and stuff going on. Um, but it really is quite sort of confusing as to what's, go what's going on. And, and Mr. Priestley um, himself, when he's uh, interviewed in 1998 by Philip B, it describes it as, nobody could play it. And um, that's a fair sort of summary, really, <laughs> of... Uh, of what's um, uh, you know what's going on in this game? It's I, I'm just I don't I haven't got a clue what I'm doing on this, um, but it still looks nice uh, nonetheless. So there was no releases in 1984 from uh, Don Priestley. So 1985 comes round and we have three games, um, not in any particular order. We got um, Benny Hill's Madcap Chase, um, which is. Um, quite well reviewed by Crash Sinclair user, sorry, your Sinclair and Sinclair user, although um, Sinclair user didn't like it all that much and only gave it 3 out of 5 on account of the strength of its graphics. But Crash gave it 78% overall and your Sinclair gave it um, 6 out of 10. Now, I actually find this game quite funny. Um, it's quite amusing. You play like a naughty underwear thief and you've got to um, stop, you know, you've got to get the... Uh, back to your goal before you get caught by the uh, nosy neighbours. And there's some really funny little graphical touches going on if you run into things and stuff. It's um, it's quite entertaining. Um, but he's really harsh on it. He in, in When he was um, interviewed in Crash Magazine issue number 34, he really, really doesn't like the Benny Hill game, which is a shame, really, because I, I quite enjoyed it. Now, he also was responsible in 1985 for Minder. Now, Minder is... Um, obviously based on the TV series of the same name and that automatically should ring alarm bells bearing in mind we'd had EastEnders, Alfie Design Pet and Superground which were all shite. Well Minder is like the Ocarina of Time compared to them. It's a, it, it's a work of art and it was quite well received in the gaming press. You play Arthur daily, you've got to go around making some dodgy deals etc um, and trying to um, you know, make a living basically, a dodgy living, and you can travel to various locations. Now, this got 75% um, in Crash issue number 17, Sinclair user 39, it got uh, 4 out of 5, so well regarded. If we come on to the um, probably one of the, 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 the sort of most iconic games that he's most well known for, which is Popeye from 1985. Now, this was Don's first Crash Smash. It's really, really great graphically. I remember the first time I saw this. Now, bear in mind um, the Spectrum's colour problems, attribute clash, etc. And just look at what's going on here. You know, great big bulky graphics, beautifully um, nice and colourful, and no attribute clash. Now, um, like I said, this gave him his first Crash Smash, but this game is really, really hard, I think, anyway. Um, but still great to sort of play. And I still remember the first time I ever saw this way back in the day. I was like, my God. How has he done that? Uh, so, you know, it's it's worth its place in um, Spectrum history. Now, moving into 1986, and we move publishers from DK Tronics to Piranha. And there was only one game from him in 1986, and it was Trapdoor, which was based on the um, TV series of the same name, voiced by Willie Rushton. This was a great game. I loved this back in the day, and I used to just like wandering around with Burke, not really having a clue what I was supposed to be doing. I never completed it. Um, Again, now you can see over the last few games, he's adopted this big, bright, colourful, chunky style of graphics, which the Trapdoor TV series actually sort of suited. Um, so it's really, really um, a nice game uh, just to sort of wander around it. Like I say, I haven't got a clue about any of the puzzles. Now, that's his only game from 1986 from Piranha, the Trapdoor. In 1987, which comes up next... He follows with two games. Um, he follows with the sequel to Trapdoor, which was called Through the Trapdoor. Now, my God, is this game hard. didn't enjoy this as much as um, Trapdoor because it's really, there's some a couple of bits and pieces in it that make you feel um, they're actually quite unfair. And I'll illustrate that with one of the examples from it um, 
coming up just in a minute as Burke and Druck disappear down the um, down the trap through the trapdoor. Now here you can swap between Burke and Druck um, in order to uh, solve puzzles, etc. In a kind of head over heel style way, I would have thought. Now this bit here is ridiculously hard, um, and it spoiled the game a bit for me. Um, I didn't play this back in the day. I only started really playing this um, a few weeks back out of curiosity when I first revisited the trap the, the first trapdoor game but you know still great graphics and everything so moving on from through the trapdoor we come to 1987's second game this is a uh, flunky which is again from piranha and crash um, weren't too kind on this one they only gave it 60 percent. Your Sinclair gave it, uh, judged it to be a mega game, giving it 9 out of 10 um, in their November 1987 issue. Now, I really like the graphical style of Flunky. I think it's a laugh. They're running around after the ungrateful establishment, doing X, Y, and Z, and basically just being a general dog's body and running the risk of getting shot by the guards if you do it wrong. Nice little game. 1988. Um, saw only one game which is up for grabs which was released by Summit Software and this is kind of a return to the um, style of the Dictator game earlier except it's like a kind of um, multiplayer um, game up to between two and eight players and you've got to start from one point and you've got to reach the airport at the other end of the island and um, there's some um, throwbacks to Dictator a, for example Left Toto is uh, mentioned it's not a bad little game. Um, you've got to sort of like try and trick the other players up, buy, sell, trade, um, find ways uh, around uh, problems, etc. Um, a bit graphically dull, but again, go and have a look at it. It's quite nice. Now, in 1989, um, Don re re released two games, and um, after that, he decided to give up um, producing games and return to teaching. The first one, released by Mastertronic Plus, was Gregory Loses His Clock. Now, out of all the big graphic -y games, this is probably my least favourite, although it's still got some wonderful neat touches, including in the this intro scene here, which you play, by the way, which is still really, really nice to, to watch to this day, but Greg Gregory Loses His Clock, the puzzles in it are just hard, I find, and... Um, let me see what the press had to say about it. Crash gave it a crash smash. And YS um, also made it a, a mega game in issue 50. Uh, I find, you know, like I say, I find this game a bit to be the sort of least enjoyable of them. But still really, really, you know, nicely presented. You can't knock that at all. And the final, final game that I can find for Don Priestley for the ZX Spectrum is Target. Released by Martech. Now this is completely different. This is kind of like a ball in a box puzzle game and you've basically got to um avoid you know taking into account the inertia of the ball and the bounces of it um hit the target each time now that's easier said than done but because it's so tricky and a little bit frustrating it's got quite a bit of one more go about it and it really is quite uh, nicely um, presented and quite playable although it will have you tearing whatever hair you've got left out of you Right, Target's coming to an end. Like I say, this is the, the final um, game that I can find credited to um, Don Priestley. Now, I decided to concentrate on him because he's one of the, the sort of individuals that, if you were to see um, some of his games, especially the later ones, you could say, ah, oh, that's a Don Priestley game. But as I hopefully have shown, there was a lot more to his um, output. Games like 3D Tanks, dictator etc all of which are worth checking out now i hope you like the video um if you do please let me know if you'd like to subscribe it would be fantastic um if you did so thanks ever so much take care of yourselves hope you have a fantastic weekend goodbye